Hi, I'm Mr. V, and today's lesson is from Illustrative Mathematics, Unit 2 on Congruence, and this is Lesson 10, where we practice some of the proofs. By the end of this uh, lesson, you should be able to say, I can use the side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, triangle congruence theorems in proof, and I can write conjectures about quadrilaterals. So, first of all, in a long time ago, when I first started teaching, probably before many of you were born, the, uh, the, um, one of my students was a carpenter's apprentice, and he was actually putting in foundations for building homes. And we got to a point in the lesson, and he said, oh, I can use this. I use this all the time. And I'm saying, what are you talking about? He says, well, if we want to know if, it's, if the foundation is square, we measure the diagonals, and if they're the same, than they are than it is and i said what are you talking about square you mean rectangle it's just no square meaning from builder's language what that means is that they will intersect at right angles if you measure the diagonals they'll be right angles and it'll be like a rectangle a rectangular shape it's called they call it square because they're, they're 90 degrees and maybe you've installed a window or a door or something like this and if you if you ever install the window you measure the diagonals and they are the same length, that means that it's not going to be a parallelogram that's slanty wise, it's going to be a rectangle, which is also a parallelogram, it's going to be a rectangle, right angles. Carbon is also used braces. This ensures something that when they're building it, it doesn't slant. Sometimes they, they use diagonal braces. Diagonal braces are either a piece of wood or a piece of metal or something that goes from opposite corners. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever tried that? So tell me your experiences when you've done that. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at different kinds of braces. So here I have two braces. I have a blue brace and I have a white brace. And notice these intersect each other at their midpoint. So I've got three dots on the white on the left, three on the right, three on the top, three on the bottom. And these distances are not the same, so I can't say this is going to be a square. But if these are intersecting at a right angle and they bisect each other, I could identify this figure. I, it, it looks like it's going to be a rhombus. What if it wasn't at a right angle? What figure would it be then? List your answers over to the side. What if it was intersecting but not bisecting, like the, the blue bisected the white, but the white did not bisect the blue in addition to that? What kind of figure would you get? What kind of quadrilateral would you get? What are the properties of the diagonals of a quadrilateral? That's what I'm looking for. And I've given you this group here of this graphic organizer, which I created, which explains the, all the possible quadrilaterals. Notice there's a red group. No pair of opposite sides are parallel. The yellow group, exactly one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Those are trapezoids. And both pair of opposite sides are parallel by definition. That's what the definition of a parallelogram is. The rhombus, rectangle, and square are also parallelograms, but they have special properties. Like the rhombus, all four sides are congruent. The rectangle, all four angles are congruent. The square is the product of both of those two, so it has all the properties of its parents. A right trapezoid has two right angles, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It can't have more than that, because then it would not be a trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoid, you're familiar with isosceles triangles, it means that the two legs, which are the sides that are not parallel, are congruent. And yes, the technical name is a dart. There's no name diamond on here. Don't ever use the word diamond when you're talking in geometry about quadrilaterals. We do have a dart, and that is a concave uh, version of a kite. These are trapeziums. If you were to look up the word trapezium or Google it, you might come up with something strange because in Europe, the definition of trapezium and trapezoid is exactly opposite from what it is in the United States. So beware, don't just look it up. Trapezium, it's a quadrilateral with no pair of opposite sides or parallel. So I have here some, uh, a, I would give a demonstration of this. I'm just gonna go right into the activity that I would have you do. Here I've given you all the family of the quadrilaterals. There's the trapezium, trapezoid, and parallelogram, and their children. And what you're supposed to do is to go through here and use these 
this geo board where you're taking these rubber bands and stretching them and draw the diagonals. And what do you notice about the diagonals? Like for instance, of a kite, well, maybe the one side by the long side bisects the short side, maybe they intersect at right angles. Um, how about a trapezium? Is there anything special about a trapezium? These, these look like they might be uh, congruent. They might be congruent. I don't know that they are. They don't look quite like they're right angles. So there's any, there's some special things. I want you to notice what you can about the diagonals. Look for three, th four things. Are they congruent? Do they bisect each other? Does the one bisect the other one, but the other one does not bisect it? Are they perpendicular? So look for those things as you do this. Then you can do the second activity where I give you the diagonals and your task is to create the, the quadrilateral. And before you create it, you can try to identify, well, what, what quadrilateral is this going to make? We're looking at the properties of the quadrilaterals. So here, if I, for instance, if I, and if you drag from the middle, this will like stretch this rubber band over the, all of these. This is a kite. Which one would this make? How about this one? Two of them I'd like to point out here. This is going to be an isosceles trapezoid, and it looks like the diagonals are perpendicular. Is that true for all isosceles trapezoids? Well, this one is also going to be an isosceles trapezoid, and it's going to be apparent when you do this that mm, you can say that the diagonals could be perpendicular, but they don't necessarily have to be. After you've explored this, then we go to the next page, where from the properties that you've noticed, you should write down several comments. If the diagonals are blank, then the quadrilateral is a blank. And I've given you several that you could check out here. For instance, if the diagonals are perpendicular and one bisects the other, then the quadrilateral is a blank. What is it? If diagonals are perpendicular and one bisects the others, I think it would be a kite. And then it goes on through here and you can list these. You can look at the answers as you go. That's what I'm asking you to try to come up with as you explore these properties of the quadrilaterals. We have a card sort. And you are going to do the card sort twice. So here you can sort them into any categories you want, but you have to explain your criteria. What is the criteria? And then you do it a second time and you explain your criteria. Some of the criteria some of my students came up with said this ones have a right angles in it. So this one, these have a right angles. This one has a right angle that's marked in it. These others don't. Some person said that they put all of the parallelograms together. Ramos is a parallelogram. Here's a parallelogram. Uh, this one looks like a parallelogram. I'm going to tell you right now it's not. And this one is definitely a parallelogram. So put all the parallelograms together, the ones that aren't. Maybe you put the ones that have tick marks on it in one group the ones that don't mark, or the ones that have arrows marked on it, and all of these others that don't. There's different ways of categorizing. And then after you've done this, what I ask you to do is to write them by rigid versus flexible. And when I do this, I don't know. I come up with one that I know is flexible, is this one, and one that I think might be flexible with this one. But to make it rigid, if I drew a line from A to Z, maybe it would not be rigid anymore. And here are these same figures, same labels and everything else with the same properties. See, this is not rigid because we've got two sides that are opposite, that are congruent, we've got the diagonal, but I don't know anything about the angles. So this could be a trapezium. This could be something that is not a parallelogram. These others, if I were to draw a segment from A to Z, I could make two triangles and I can justify that the triangles are congruent, which is what we're going to be doing here. So, of the three, of the pairs of figures in the card sort, by name, list at least two triangles that can be proved congruent using side, angle, side, 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 and angle, side, angle. Well, let's just look at this one here. I have FYJ and HYJ, and I've got a side, an angle, and a side. I could use the side, angle, side in this triangle to prove these are congruent. Here I've got four sides that are congruent. And if I were to draw this side down the middle, it is congruent to itself. So by the side, 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 I could triangle congruence theorem. I could prove these two are congruent. This one is the side, side, 
angle. And we don't know if that's going to work or not. This would not be, KLM is not one that you would want to use. I've shown you already that STUV doesn't work. Here I've got a side, an angle, and this side is congruent to itself. So I could say, oh, by the side, side, side angle, side, these two are congruent. And this is the one with the parallelogram. Now, if I used the theorem that says all the sides, the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then I could use the side, side, side in this one. But I don't have one for angle side angle yet. This is the one for angle side angle, where I only know the angles. The alternate interior angles here are congruent because of lines uh, A, D, and B, C being parallel. And the alternate interior angles here and here are congruent because of A, B, and D, C being parallel. And then I've got the side congruent to itself. So by angle side angle, angle side angle, these two triangles would be congruent. This is the John Hancock building. What do you notice about these these braces? You notice they're going to make it into a quadrilateral. What kind of quadrilateral is that? Well, many people say it's a rectangle, but I want you to notice that it's just at the bottom here, it's wider than it is at the top. At the top, that this little piece goes different. So really, this is an isosceles trapezoid. How could you test your conjecture? What do you know about isosceles trapezoids that have to be true? Matching pictures to proof. Let's see. So here's some things that you could prove if you knew certain things were true. A quadrilateral with perpendicular diagonals that bisect each other. Well, here we have perpendicular diagonals. They bisect each other. They say this is equilateral. So this, I could prove that this is a rhombus, maybe. If one diagonal of a quadrilateral is perpendicular bisector of the other, then the two pairs of adjacent sides are congruent. So if one pair is perpendicular bisector of the other, then I have two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So this side would be congruent to this one, and this side would be congruent to this one. They're adjacent and they're congruent. That would be a kite, by the way. If opposite angles in an equilateral triangle are congruent, equilateral quadrilateral, let's see, that's this one. If I were to draw a line here and I could say that opposite angles, so I'm trying to prove that I and B would be congruent. I would have the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem to prove these two triangles are congruent. Since they are congruent by CPCTC, the two angles must be congruent. In a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. We've actually done this in class where we, we, we went through proving with the angles that the two triangles are congruent and by CPCTC that the opposite sides would be congruent. So that's one that we, this, this one, parallel, that's number four. So you're supposed to match these up. So this, this would be number one, this would be number two, this would be number three, let's see, number four. The Flossosley's triangle is a five, number five, and number six would be this one. And you put those in the table, and you can look at my answers down below. Lesson synthesis. So what conjectures could you make that have to be true about an equilateral triangle? Explore the equilateral triangle in this applet. If we do that, we can see that um, this is a rhombus. I can move this around, try to do a drag test on it. You see it gets bigger and bigger and smaller, and I can actually move this thing around. What conjectures could you come up with? All four sides are the same. No, 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 no. That's what we know about it. We know that it's an equilateral quadrilateral. Maybe you make a conjecture that the diagonals bisect each other. Maybe you make the conjecture that the diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus. Maybe you make the conjecture that the angles are bisected by the diagonals. The vertex angles are all four of them are di bisected by the angles. Different things that you could prove about a rhombus. And um, finally, for the cool down, we're going to use the sort cards that we used from previous. And with the matching activities, the things that you could prove, you should try to choose one and actually do a, do a proof with it. For instance, quadrilateral perpendicular bisectors bisect each other that is perpendicular. So a quadrilateral perpendicular bisectors bisect each other is equilateral. We're going to try to prove that this is a, rhomb is a rhombus. And I'll do one of these to show you how we do that. First of all, all of the given information is marked. So I have two triangles here that are congruent. Why? Because of the side angle side 
triangle congruence, triangle congruence theorem, I can say that triangle F Y F Y J is congruent to triangle H Y J H Y J, and that's because of this reason. <coughs> because they're congruent, that means that this side has to be congruent to this. By inference, I could also use this side, angle side. This side has to be congruent to this one. Now, how do I know that these two are congruent? Well, here I have a side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So I can do that for each of these and show that the, all four, that these two sides are congruent, that since this side is also congruent to this side, that these three sides are congruent, and then this side is congruent to this, so that all four sides are congruent. One of the theorems was this one, prove that we have two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So here I have a side, side, here I have an angle, angle, and here I have a side that's congruent to itself. So the reflexive property, it's a common side. By the side angle side, the two triangles are congruent. Because they are congruent, I can say the corresponding parts of these two triangles must be congruent, so these two sides must be the same. The same thing with these two sides over here, and these would be, this side would be congruent to this side. If I were to draw this line down the middle and say that this side is congruent to itself, I have a side in the one triangle, side in the other. Here I've got a side here that's congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side. The two triangles are congruent by SSS, the side 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 triangle congruent theorem, which means that the corresponding parts of those congruent triangles must be congruent, CPCTC. So angle I and angle B must be congruent. And you do the same thing, only instead this time draw it with your diagonal from B to I to prove that angles Z and A are congruent. Not necessarily congruent to B and I. We've proved this before. We have an angle congruent to here because these two sides are parallel. We have an angle here that's congruent to this one because these two sides are parallel. And we have the side that's congruent to itself. By the side angle side, or angle side angle, the two triangles are congruent. And since they are congruent by the CPCTC, the opposite sides, this side is congruent to this one because they're corresponding. This side is congruent to this one. So we can prove this. And these are different proofs that we've done in class. There's the last one, which I'll leave it for you to try on your own. This is one that we have not yet talked about. Oh, wait. This is probably the most important one of all to talk about right now. Here we have the side is congruent to a side. We have the side is congruent to itself, so we have a side. We have the angle is congruent to the angle. This is the angle side side, or the side side, side angle. We haven't proved this yet. It works sometimes. Is this one of those times? Well, what we do know is that we have two sides of the triangle that are we have the one side and the hypotenuse of one triangle are congruent to one side and the hypotenuse. In the in a right triangle, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If we know that the one side of the second triangle is congruent to the hypotenuse of the other side, what can we say about this third side? That it has to be congruent. So these two have to be congruent. So by side, 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 yes, these two triangles are congruent. And that means that's because this third side, if it's the Pythagorean theorem that says a squared plus b squared is c squared, a squared plus this would have to be b squared <clears throat> is equal to c squared. Long lesson. Get ready for tomorrow. Good luck and success.